Well, hello, parents. This is the first of what I'm hopeful to be many videos in which you have the opportunity to hear from me. We have discovered that as we continue to grow and raise the bar of our parent partnership here within Legacy Student Ministry particularly, we know that we need to be doing more than just a stagnant email. And so one of the ways that we've been doing this with our life group leaders is through videos. And uh, I've learned a lot through that, learned a lot through being an online student with Denver Seminary of how to give you something that's quick, uh, that you can uh, that you can kind of bite onto, that gives you information that you need, but in a, a little bit less stagnant form than an email. And so uh, the videos are going to be a piece of that. And so this one really functions as an invite. Uh, I want to invite you to this Wednesday night build uh, this Wednesday night build parent focus group. And uh, build is really uh, core as one of our four B's within parent partnership. The third one actually, uh, being present, begin listening, and then build uh, this relationship, this this ongoing partnership. Right? This this if you are the primary discipler, then as we've listened, now we want to equip you, and we want to give you tools and resources and stories, and let you hear from people and have some Q and A and get practical and. And do this alongside other parents who are right in the middle of it with you. And so uh, the very first two in, in the fall that we did were very informational based. First on just understanding adolescence and the pressures that your adolescent faces. And, and within that going, okay, if that's true, then no matter what topic you put in there, those pressures are going to be applicable to that topic. And so we started the topic of relationships, sex, and dating, which is what we'll go through the rest of the year. And we really just introduced the concept of going, okay, what does the, how does the Bible establish these relationships? And what kind of relationships are there? And when is sex a part of those relationships, whether a yes or a no from God? And therefore, what do we do with dating since it wasn't established as one of those relationships? Uh, because it's really our culture's way of handling an, an absent period that used to be courting. And and therefore, it's not there anymore. And so due to the absence of when you date, do this in Scripture, when you date, don't do this in Scripture, here's when dating should start, etc. There's some approaches that we tend to take uh, when it comes to dating as parents. And not only are there these approaches we, we take because we're trying to help uh, where Scripture is absent or fill in where Scripture seems to be absent, we also have these personal, you know, uh, um, responses that we have but what we figured out is all of them are simply out of fear and you gave us your top five fears and and those things were helpful to go okay how do we combat that a little bit which leads us into the spring which is what i like to call the let's get practical time uh, this week very much so we're going to get extremely practical in the context of if you remember the gospel principle in our very first focus group if you weren't there the gospel principle is this that your students are worshipers they're worshipers, and they will worship something. And therefore, your role is to shepherd their heart into pushing them towards shepherding Jesus. That, that is your primary role, not providing food, not providing clothing, not providing housing, not providing good friends, a good school, a good education, uh, financial support for college. Your primary role is to shepherd their heart. And so in shepherding their heart, what are some principles of how that applies to dating. So we're going to talk through some, some shepherding principles. And then we're going to go, okay, let's get even more practical and go, what are some lies that they are hearing from culture around them when it comes to relationship, sex, and dating? And then what are some, some uh, conversations, some, uh, some, some things that you need to be sparking and talking about almost in this, in this formal uh, or informal process of discipleship with your, with your students? And I say informal simply because um, it's not as if you're having to set up a time and a meeting, but it's just as you're going with your student and things come up, what are some things you need to be talking about? And then when we get to April, it's going to be really exciting because you're going to get to hear from a few couples that have been there, that have made mistakes, made uh, you know good decisions, going to just kind of go, here it is, here's what I learned, hope this helps. We're still, you know, still in this together, but I hope that this would help you. And so we're going to get extremely practical this week and in April. And I want you to be there. Uh, we cannot partner with you if you don't meet us here. Um, and when we're trying to put something in your hands that goes, 
the, the number of conversations that I have with many of you as parents going, I don't know what to do. Well, uh, we're trying to put things in front of you to go, hey, start here. Start with these principles that are trustworthy and true, and then let's get practical together and try to piece some things together. So uh, you can sign up online for that. It's free. We have childcare. We the cafe will be available to you as parents too. We'll also have uh, you know some coffee and pastries within the actual focus group, and I I'm just excited. I think it's going to be great um, as we get a chance to dive into uh, relationship, sex, and dating part two. The other thing I wanted to just let you know is uh, we have a guest speaker for your students this week. It's actually my cousin who has done mission work in both England, Germany, and Lebanon. He's going to be sharing about the second part of Engage, which is what we talked about last week, one of our four E's as a church, engaging your circle of influence, the friends the Lord has put around you with the gospel, and then the local community. Why do we do Project Shine? Well, this week we're going to go, and there's a global picture that you need to know about. And Aaron's going to be coming in and doing some really neat things, showing some pictures, sharing some stories about helping our students become aware of uh, this global church and what God is doing in this global church. So sign up for the focus group. Be praying for Aaron. And we will see you on Wednesday night.